I was flying high in the midtown sky. I made an urgent descent and landed at Hangar Simons. This is where I met General Esteban Villa. American by birth. sarcasm and cynicism <laughs> and uh, because I'm not letting you get off too easily and I don't like the General Villa is one of the most tenacious artists that I've ever met. Chicano or Chicana by choice.
arte día por día. One drawing a day, at the end of the year, you'll have 365 drawings. So one a day, okay? Arte. We gotta give up on that. Mira, we have solar energy, that's clean. We have water energy, that's clean. We have wind energy, that's clean. We have, <laughs> you see, we don't need oil to pollute, keep polluting. Uh, we, uh, we have natural resources like the sun. Solar energy is an energy. And you introduce chili power is an energy. Wow. <laughs> if we could harness chiles as an energy, that's super hot. <laughs> Danger. Super hot energy. <laughs> I 
reflect on 2008 as I sat at Hanger Simons, I remember a gentleman walking in and being seated next to me. He was wearing a cap, a cover on his head that had a patch that stated RCAF. And after he uh, got adjusted, we uh, eventually met and he had told me that he was an artist and I gravitated to that and asked him what the RCF meant. He told me the Royal Chicano Air Force, sometimes confused with the Royal Canadian Air Force. And after we laughed, I began to talk to him about art and I gravitated even more than when he told me he was an artist and, and how he uh, landed there for refuel and maintenance. <laughs> and we laughed a little bit more. And as we began talking, he was discussing Chicanismo, which is the ideology of the Chicano movement. And I became captivated, and, and ever since then, as I reflect, he's been an inspiration, a mentor, and we've been talking at least monthly since 2008. And it's been an honor to know him. It's been an honor of crossing paths, crossing flight paths on our journeys as artists. And I will always remember him. I'll never forget General Esteban Villa, I appreciate that all that you have done for me.
Boxing 123 live here with Esteban Villa as he draws me and I'm going to ask him some pin questions. Regarding poetry, my name is John Gutierrez here at the Royal Chicano Air Force hangar of Esteban Villa. How's your day going, senor? Good. I'm getting a lot of rest. <coughs> uh, I just celebrated my 89th birthday. And uh, I was born in 1930 in Tulare, California. And um, so uh, next year, I'm going to be a 90-year-old man. <laughs> wow. And for being 90, I want to be like Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett's like 93 or something like that. And he's still singing songs and dating young girls <laughs> like Lady Gaga. And uh, he's just in really nice health, nice shape. And I want to be like him. Okay. And just uh, do as much art as I can um, as long as I'm... Uh, able and uh, right up to the last day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and do some drawing, some painting, some music, write songs. Yeah, and not waste a day. So, thank you for asking. That's me. I'm in, I feel like uh, I'm in good shape. I'm in good health. Yeah. Yeah. I have a questionnaire here for you. It's regarding poetry. Uh, back in 2009, when we used to talk at Simon's Restaurant, uh, you used to go across the street to Luna's Cafe and stand up on stage and right and read poetry. Yeah, spoken word. <laughs> and something I had always uh, been fascinated with as a as an artist as well. I wanted to find out what the thought process was. And my first question would be like, where do poems come from? Where did poems come from? Like for you personally, like where do your poems come from? Like from within, uh, you know, like your yeah. compassion, your passion. Yeah. Well, you know, um, going back, schools to me were my growing up grounds. Um, we were raised real poor, no books in the house uh, or uh, music. We, you know, real real poor. So schools, uh, English, grammar, uh, literature, classes, reading books, reading poems, reading about poets, poets, and um, that fascinated me, you know, and learned along the way that uh, um, if I talk to people, uh, people resent my talk. Um, because they didn't want to listen to my politics or anything. But I found out, John, that um, if I said the same thing that I want to say in form of poetry, rhyme, rhyme, and uh, music, so I write what I want to say with, um, with music, and they listen to my music. Oh, so I get to nice. say what I want to say in a poetic sense. I think of my songwriting as poetry. You're going to, you know, uh, uh, it's too late to speculate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, America's under attack. Uh, close your eyes if you don't want to see, but you're going to hear it from me. <laughs> yes, and that ties into... Cover your mouth, cover your ears if you don't want to be involved. But while you were right, it came down, the two buildings. Yes. Now uh, we have a war to solve. Just speak. So that's a poem. That's where it's coming from. Thank you. Uh, I, I applied music and poetry to make my political statement. And the people that didn't want to listen to me without the music or the poetry resented me. Look, I don't want to talk about politics, Bia. 
don't talk to me about politics, okay? And education. And they said, okay, man, don't get mad. <laughs> but I didn't quit. I said, I'm using poetry. To answer your question, um, that's how poetry came to me. No, thank you. My next question would be like, when do you write? And when do you normally do your writing? Well, um, my writing is uh, uh, comes to me um, at all times of the day. Sometimes if I'm ready to wake up in the morning, you know, and I'm there meditating, so, oh my gosh, what day is today? What time is it? What's the day? What's going on today? <laughs> and these ideas come to me about what I want to write, about a person, such a Travis, the Lord of Cuerta, Jose Montoya, uh, my students like yourself, and uh, the RCAF, and that's where the thoughts come in. So um, I write it down, pen, paper, like this, before I forget. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and uh, if I don't write it down, uh, I'll, I'll forget. You know, exactly. So, so, um, I that's what I do. If you notice, I'm go thumbing through a little uh, notebook where yeah. I'm telling you that I um, write down your ideas, uh, yeah, at that minute. And it just takes a second to write it down. That's when I write. It could be, I, I could be anywhere, anytime. <laughs> I could be in a restaurant. Oh, wait a minute, excuse me, I gotta write something down. Yeah, there's no, like, um, a island where I can go and write, you know, the way most... Like Ernest Hemingway? <laughs> I don't ever Hemingway. I catch it. I do it while I'm drinking coffee. Exactly. And I was wondering also, like, when you, like, your titles of your poems, just like when you're writing a song. Yeah. Do your title, does it, do the titles of your poems or, or lyrics to a song come first? Yeah. Or does it come afterwards or both? Yeah. Um, usually uh, <coughs> the title comes first. Um, um, like, for example, here's something I wrote the other day. What rhymes with orange? Okay, so I wrote that down. And I call it playing with words. Okay, it's rhyme time. Dime, combine, fine, wine, dine, sublime. Springtime, John Prime. Cocaine line, crying time. Sunshine, overtime. Yours, mine, neon sign. But what rhymes with orange? Blues, do's, lose, booze. You abuse, zoo, goo, caboose, papoose. Up to, loose to. But what rhymes with orange? <laughs> so you're seeing yeah. how I, I write things down. Uh, not right now. This is not a good time to be born. Knowing what I know now about pain, parental control, the repression, the depression, the recession, back into the fetus position, sucking my thumb for oral satisfaction, I would say, no, thank you, not now, not at this time, not at this place, if I were asked to be born. I would say, no, thank you, not until I heard you say, I love you, mijo. You are special. You are so good. You are so wonderful. You will be somebody someday. Oh, that's then awesome. I would say, I want to be born now. I want to be born. Let me be born. <laughs> oh, that bravo, uh, bravo! Mother's Day. Oh, that's sweet. That ties. Yeah. In. So to answer your question, uh, I write. Please write when you can. Don't wait to get to a magical island. Uh, writing skills are. It's not a place. Um, it's something that's inside of you. Happiness is not a place. It's something inside of yourself. So don't go looking for happiness or poetry in a little island somewhere. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> right when you can. Thank you. And uh, do you think we should read a, a poem more than once? Um, absolutely. 
Uh, I've read certain poems. You know, for example, uh, I said that to me, um, a, a nice song is like a poem. So I learned that song, which I see as a poem. Uh, and I sing that song hundreds of times. So yes, I read it more than once uh. because uh, people get to hear it. People have never heard it before, and that's why I do it, you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And lastly, uh, when did you decide to become a poet or a lyricist? Well, um, I always uh, enjoyed uh, reading. Um, uh, I learned how to read in the first grade, and I have cousins in Bakersfield, and, and they never learned to read. Can, can you imagine? Kino Barrios and Louis and Albert and Reno and Aurelia and, and they, they, they couldn't read. They were they dropped out of school. <coughs> but uh, to me, uh, uh, language was a natural. Um, I even um, got to the point where after I got out of the army in Korea, and went back to finish college. Um, I majored in art education to be an art teacher. And the second minor was English. Oh. So there you go, language, reading, poetry, literature, novels, <laughs> and, and so on, yeah. And also in Spanish too, so I could write a few things in Spanish too. But I never gave up el español, hablando y leyendo y escribiendo en español. Sí. Gracias. <laughs> oh, thank you, Esteban. That concludes uh, my interview with the renowned artist Esteban Villa at his property, at his beautiful acreage, and uh, on a beautiful day, on yeah. the historic day of September 11th. Uh, yeah. So thank you for your time. And one thing I must say to all of you out there is um, uh, <coughs> uh, you have to make yourself who you are. That's what I did. Uh, I gave myself my, my character, my personality, my uh, identity, uh, and I gave myself uh, creativity imagination, innovation, improvisation, and um, imagination, very important. So I gave myself that, and I would uh, uh, advise everyone out there listening to do the same. Be the best that you can be. Don't wait for Godot or wait for the dough, okay? <laughs> yeah, be the best. Be the best that you can be, and never give up on yourself and spend the rest of your life bettering yourself every single day. A new word, a new sign, a new color, a new thought, a new idea. You, yeah, don't settle for being normal. Yeah, normal is not good. Average is not good. Is mediocrity a, a, <laughs> go, a, a, go, yeah, a I like goddess? To, I'd like to pray with her. Mediocrity, that's mediocre. Mediocrity is not a Greek god. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, self-denial, denial is not a river in Egypt. <laughs> and um, uh, um, so what's the other one? The dime, a dime? Yeah. Uh, the uh, doctors, two doctors? Oh, uh, 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 well, it doesn't come to me, but uh, a paradigm is, is not 20 cents. It's not and two doctors. And a paradox <laughs> is not two doctors. <laughs> That's what it was. I was getting them, <laughs> getting them rearranged there. Exactly. Well, thank, thank you, uh, Stefan. Yeah. Another thank you for your time. Yeah. Okay. Go for it out there. <laughs>